everybody, and welcome to uh, Armor Investing. I'm Brett Rosenthal. This is our new Sunday night show. So futures are open. Let's talk about the stock market. We'll go over the stocks we were focused on last week, directly investing on our trading desk. I'm going to share them with you, talk about what we think the market may be doing tomorrow and the rest of the week and how we're going to attack it. So what are the stocks that are in focus on our trading desk what are the stocks we've been buying on our trading desk? And then I'll get to your Q uh, and A. So what I've been doing with you guys every day at 405 is sharing with you the number one chart of the day directly off our desk. And what I call this, this armor investing way that we share, it's a virtual hedge fund experience. I've been running, I ran it hedge funds for over a decade, been running private capital and my own personal capital for over 30 years. And so this is the way we literally execute every day. And we break our day into three pieces. We break our portfolio into three pieces. We day trade, we swing trade, and we invest. And we use tools for each technique. Day trading layers on top of swing trading, which turns into investments. So we're going to walk you through that process. All right. We spend time on our desk listening to conference calls, talking to management teams, extracting information that makes money. And this is what I'm going to share with you tonight and every night when we do these shows together. So um, to make it most effective, you can go ahead as I'm talking, as I'm sharing with you these thoughts and fill out the comment section. And we'll get to all the Q&A after we go over the charts that we're focused on on our desk, the stock charts we're buying, the stock charts that we're watching, we may buy next week. Once we go through all that, then we'll go to the Q&A. I do want to share with you that we have opened up our virtual hedge fund experience to everybody to experience a five-day free trial. Join us on the desk, see what we do every day, and see if you want to become a portfolio manager of your own assets. And Armor Insider is literally a part of our hedge fund, right? Our virtual fund. So you're deciding how to take risk, what risk to take, everything I share with you tonight. At the end of the day, you're the risk manager of your own assets. You have to see if it suits your risk tolerance, if it suits the goals you're looking for. Then you structure a portfolio to benefit from the information that we're sharing. Okay? So I'm going to leave that up to you. So if you want to do that, feel free. We would love to see you. There's the free trial right there. At the end of this conversation, you can go ahead and take a peek, armorinvesting.com, free trial. All right? Uh, obviously, if you enjoy this conversation, boom, hit the subscribe button so you become part of our community here on YouTube. Certainly share this with anybody you think would benefit from it. So now let's dive into the stock market. What's happening right now? Take a quick look at what happened last week and how that guides us for next week. Go over the stock charts of the week where we're focused and the stocks that we're going to be buying or we have bought. I'll let you know which is which. So the thing I wanted to start with tonight, futures are open. They're down a little bit. No big deal. Markets had a nice big run. So the first thing we talk about on our desk is we use swing tr trading strategies to understand the flow of capital into the stock market in general. And so what we look for is um, a concert of movement. We call it confluence across all um, of the, really the 10 indexes we follow. And we have algorithms designed to trade, to swing trade these 10 indexes. And when they all work together, that's the hoof print, okay, of institutional capital flowing into the market. And what we like to say is information makes money, but institutions make markets. And our job is to get there right with or right in front of the institutional flow of capital. So step one is to, to look at where we are in the journey of the risk monitor. We go from red to green. We have that first week of green, which is the most dangerous. And then we see a new trend really forming. And we're on top of that. So four or five weeks ago at our virtual hedge fund, we began building our investing portfolio. And then I think it was four weeks ago, the risk monitor turned green. Maybe it's three now. 
and um, put all of our capital to work by the end of that week in our swing trading portfolio and our investing portfolio. The day trading portfolio, I'm going to save for another day. We just focus on trading the S&P there. We trade triple the S&P and we're just knocking down the numbers. And that's, that's I think, for a whole nother night and for a night where you're really interested in how to day trade the S&P, how to day trade a big index. Because the Armored Day Trading Playbook, and we were four for five last week. So we made money on four out of five days last week. And it was a big week for us. Okay? And if we've just been knocking down those numbers week after week. And the theory behind that day trading strategy, we have a playbook we're building. It's very simple. There's only so many ways big indexes can trade, even some big stocks. They all follow the same uh, uh, playbook. And if you can identify the play that's unfolding, that's how you trade. And then here's the number one key. You can write this down. Think about this for your day trading. Try to do this. Try to do this. When you're day trading, get rid of of all of your chop days. Be honest with yourself. You know the days when you're making money. You know the setups. If you're part of our virtual hedge fund, I share them with you as it's happening, right? So you can come into our free trial for five days and watch it happen. I'll just lay it out for you. This is the play. Here's where we're putting a position on. This is where the stop is. This is where the target is. This is how we manage our stops. I know it's going to sound crazy, but that's the easy part. That's actually the easy part. The hard part is avoiding all of the chop days. The hard part is focusing on what works and getting rid of the rest of the noise. And we can focus on that on another weekend. But what I want to do right now is go through the progression real quick. Just run through the charts here. And we have to start with the Dow. Okay, the Dow has been lagging behind all the other indexes. And what looked like it was making a huge pennant wedge here on the downside turned into a breakout in the last two weeks. Now, when we're through going, going uh, over these charts right here, and you're going to see the stock market and see how strong it is. And what I, what I'm coming here to tell you on a Sunday night is to shut off the noise around you. Everybody's going to tell you why all of these oscillators are overbought, blah, blah, blah. Okay. These same people were clueless four or five weeks ago when we were buying the market, right? They were telling you the same swill back then. And they're just coming up with new reasons now why the market can't go up. And so what we do at our desk is we don't, we don't predict what's going to happen next. Okay. We have a saying here and it's price action is all. I don't care about the noise. Shut it off. What? Is the price action? What's it telling you? I'm going to share one chart with you. One chart. The Trump card trumps all the noise. I'm going to show you one chart in a minute. Okay. If you need an explanation of why the market's going up, I'm going to show you one chart. Everything else is a waste of time. This one chart is important. But I submit to you that if you want to become a great investor, a great trader, you need to stop allowing your brain to control you with logic, right? You have to stop this incessant need to explain why the market's doing something, where the market's going to go. You have to stop that. It's a complete waste of time. Makes for great TV, talking heads, arguing with each other, coming up with equally compelling reasons why the market could skyrocket or plummet. And by the time you're done ingesting all of that swill, you haven't the slightest idea how to run a portfolio. And so what I submit to you is get off of that bus to nowhere. And just execute what you see. Use stop losses to protect. Execute your strategy. Price action is all. So now let's go look at what the price action is showing us. And I'm going to show you one chart that if you still demand an answer for why the market's going up, I'm going to show you why. So first of all, I wanted to show you the Dow. And I want to look at the weekly level. Okay. 
So the Dow has just broken out of a weekly pennant formation. Here's a massive run up. Here's the sell off as the Fed was raising rates and reducing uh, quantitative easing, doing quantitative tightening, right? And now you have this pendant form and a just it just started. So everyone's telling you you're late, okay, is lying to you. You're not late. It's just started. Okay. Take a look at the S&P. Just started. The risk monitor went green three weeks ago. At the, at really, right, right at the beginning there. Okay, ran. We're making money on all of our investments right now. So what, we, what we're doing, I'll get to that in a minute. We'll go over the investments. I'll show you how we manage our stops, okay? Here's the equally weighted S&P. Does that look like something that's overheated and gotten away from you? Or does it look like something, here's the volume down here, that's had bigger volume each week for the last three weeks as it marks new highs? Sure. You want to tell me the NASDAQ 100 is extended? That's the leadership, right? There's like seven or 10 stocks leading the whole market. I get it. Here's the equally weighted S uh, a NASDAQ 100. 100 equally weighted stocks just now breaking out. Price action is everything. Price action is all. Even the, even the small caps, which are the banks that are going to struggle the most, closed above all the key moving averages for two weeks in a row. But I'll grant you that's the weakest looking index. Mid cap looks really good. Here comes the IBD 50. These are the innovative stocks coming off the bottom along with ARC. And so I would finish again on the Dow. That's a massive breakout on the Dow. I don't know why, and I'm not sure I'm going to find room in my portfolio for this. But take a look at Boeing. I mean, maybe I should find room in my portfolio for Boeing. I can't figure out why. Maybe it's just a flow of capital. But that's a sick looking chart pattern that's just now breaking out. And that's why I really focus on the Dow right now. So let me just mention this. And then we're going to get to the, really the number one chart of tonight. Because I know everyone wants to understand why the markets, I'm going to show you one chart. It's going to show you why the market's going up. All right. But I wanted you to look at all those chart patterns. They're all breaking out and they've just started with the exception of the NASDAQ 100. And then here's the insidious fact about technical analysis tools that nobody wants to tell you. And that is when a bull market gets started, everything becomes overbought and it stays overbought. It can be weeks. It can be months of overbought before it finally breaks down. And so that broken clock will keep screaming at you, it's overbought, it's overbought, it's overbought, as it goes higher and higher and higher. And then eventually it will sell off and they'll say, see, I told you it was overbought. That doesn't help anybody. Turn that noise off. Price action is all. I just walked you through all the major indexes. Tell me they don't look like a major bull market's unfolding. And now you want to know why, because you just can't shut your brain off and execute. You just got to know. I get it. We're all like that. Okay. So we have a Slack room, all of our armor insiders. And again, we have a, a live, you know, free trial. If you want to come into the desk all day and trade with us. And then, you know, also don't forget, we've got two levels for armor uh, insiders. If you want to trade with us all day and be a portfolio manager, you become an armor insider. If you want the Armor Report, which is our morning meeting and the captain's log before the market opens, so you know what our thoughts are and how we intend to trade going forward, you can do that. Maybe you can't be on the desk all day. I get it. So what I suggest you do is sign up for the free trial, join us, see how it goes. And if you can't stay on the desk all day, then we have an opportunity for you that will help you manage assets correctly called the Armor Report. So I share that with you because I'm going to go swing over to our Slack room right here. I'm going to give you a big picture. All right. This is the number one chart, the only chart that you need to care about if you're trying to understand why the market looks so good. There it is. 
S&P 500 performance fed net QE since the pandemic. Okay. QE is actually going up while the Fed raises rates and says they're doing quantitative tightening. Stock market's going up as money and liquidity is added to the system. Okay. Now I'm going to share with you a headline. This was the headline today. This weekend, Forbes Digital. Forget the Fed. China's gearing up to rip in trillions of dollars. You put that chart together with that fact, and you can understand why the equity markets are going higher. It's not always the U.S. Fed, which in this case, the Fed is adding liquidity, even though they tell you they're not. They're adding liquidity, supporting the market, probably because of the banking crisis, right? And the Chinese are about to launch a massive quantitative easing program to deal with their deflation, which means they'll end up exporting all of that. Okay. So there, if you're trying to figure out why the market's going up, if you insist upon that question, and I get it, we all do it. Okay. So I don't, I don't hold it against you, but there's the reason the market's going up. And the thing is you won't know when the Fed really starts to quantitatively tighten until that chart updates, right? So we have to use stops. Now let's roll through charts real quick. Okay. So now we're going to skip over to charts that we've been buying, stocks that we've been buying on our desk in the afternoons, four o'clock, I go over the number one chart of the day. And I'm going to just share with you a couple and then how we're managing the stops, because that's the key here. This is the part that I think helps an investor commit capital and make money in the market. You don't have to take this leap of faith and then bury yourself because you, you can't, you, you, you refuse to stop it out. Like, that's the hardest part. Like you sit there, you look at the market, you're like, God, Boeing looks great, but I'm afraid to lose money. Figure out the position size, take a position in a company you're comfortable with. Maybe Boeing's that company. Figure out your stop. You already know how much money you're going to lose. It hits that price, you're out. You've already lost that money in your head. And as you start to make money, you raise your stop. And you get to a position where you're playing with the house's money. Worst case scenario, it comes back down, you book a small gain. Best case scenario, you're at the beginning of a massive bull market for reasons nobody can explain except for historians, okay? And you make a fortune and you turn off all the noise, okay? That's how we make money at our virtual hedge fund, all right? So here are some of the positions I went over with you. And I'm going to uh, put it on a, a daily chart here. So um, we own shares of Adobe into earnings. So we bought them in here. Okay. So Adobe set up this perfect um, bottom in here and then a flag formation. I'm sharing this with you because you're going to see a lot of flags like this that break out and rip higher. And in a bear market, you can't buy these flags, but it, this is a hoof print of a bull market. When you see blowouts for three days, tight consolidations for a couple of weeks, and then they start really ripping. So we bought Boeing in, excuse me, Adobe in here. It ripped higher, had earnings on Friday, which, you know, they blew out top and bottom line and raised guidance. We're not a buyer today. These are stocks we've already bought, right? So our stop started here because we bought it literally in the pennant. And when it gapped out, we raised our stop to the low of the gap day. And now we're just going to let it rip. And every time it makes a consolidation, we raise the stop to the consolidation. I'll give you an example. Here's Uber. We went over Uber. We went over Uber with you um, one day this past week. You can check our YouTube channel and certainly consider subscribing if you want to make sure you don't miss them. Okay. And we started here with Uber. And then when it breaks out and consolidates again, we raise our stop to the low of those meeting bars. And now it's ripping higher. Okay, here's another uh, here's another example. One of my favorite names is Trade Desk. We've been on Trade Desk since it was down here in this big base. So now that it's built another consolidation pattern, we raise the stop to the low of the consolidation pattern. I don't know how long 
stock market's going to go up. But what I do know is I'm going to keep raising my stops as we go. And eventually I'm going to start getting stopped out of things and raising my cash balance. I don't know when that's going to happen. And I don't worry about it. Okay. Here's Tesla. We're on Tesla ridiculously cheap. Okay. Right here is it came across the 50 day moving average, which was the original stop. Okay. Then it made this small formation here and closed above the 200 day. So we raised our stop right there. I said, okay, just closed above the 200 day. The stop's here now. Now we're playing with the house money. It comes back down. We're going to make money on Tesla no matter what. And instead it walked up like a record 13 days in a row. And if it takes off again, guess what? I'm going to raise my stop to here. Right? I think my stop right now is down here. I don't want to make this too tight. But that's a good point, though, and I want to share this with you. You decide where you want to put that stop. You want to raise it all the way up and be real tight. You're going to get stopped out quicker. You're going to book bigger gains. You're a swing trader. If you want to be an investor, you leave your stop a little bit lower. Let it have room, but make sure you make some money on this run. That's kind of where we're at. Okay. So now let's swing over to, um, those are just a couple of the names we went over. And I think I'll just swing over to a couple of the names that are just now starting to come out. All right. I did a lengthy video for you on unity this week. Okay. I think unity is a big stock. Of course, we started down here. It blew out on the, on the Apple news. We raised the stop to the low of this base then it blows out again above the 200 day moving average. Now our stops here. Okay. Theoretically, we're not going to be, well, I say theoretically, if there's a bad announcement overnight, stock gaps down, I'm going to lose money. Stops don't protect you from that. But under normal circumstances, I'm going to make money in unity, no matter what. I'm either going to make a little bit of money or a lot of money. I don't know yet. I don't fall in love with any of my stocks. Let it do what it wants to do see which ones turn into the big, the big winners. And you know what the funny thing is over my life? The ones that turn into the big winners are never ones I think are going to turn into big winners, right? The ones I think are the greatest to get stopped out. <laughs> and the other ones, you know, skyrocket. I go, how'd that happen? I don't know. But there's a lesson in that. Don't force your will on the market. Don't fall in love with anything. Build your positions, do your research, gather your information, build your positions, and then let them grow. They're all, they're all my favorite children, right? So I love the Unity story. And with that, I told you last week, it's time to buy Roblox again, okay? Roblox had a couple of good days at the end of the week here. Our stop is right in here. Now, I can't raise the stop yet. It hasn't broken out. But let's say Roblox blows out early next week. Then I'll raise my stop to the low of the day of the blowout. But it hasn't done that yet. I just took the position two days ago. So it hasn't even taken off yet, okay? Now let's round it out with a couple of stocks haven't really gone up yet. I'm starting to put some money to work in um, Fortinet. Okay, so you can see Fortinet breaking out of a big base. So I'm starting to put some money back into the cybersecurity stocks. Fortinet and CrowdStrike are my top two favorites. Just started putting money to work here. So they haven't run away yet. You can see where the stop is, the red line. All right, and I just... Splunk is an old favorite of mine, and I really like how that stock is setting up. This is a turnaround story. It's just now coming out of a base. You can argue this is a cup and handle, and it just broke out of a pennant at the end of that handle last week. I haven't bought the stock yet. This is something you can write down, do your own homework on. I, these cybersecurity stocks have not run away. All right. On top of that, I'm starting to put some capital to work. And I spoke to you guys last week, or was it two weeks ago? Or was it, maybe it was last week. No, I think it was two weeks ago, right? Because I was out of the office on a road trip with the family last week. Or was it last week? I don't know. Time's flying by. How's it possible that days go slowly and years only fly by? That's a question I've got for you. Maybe you can answer it at some point for me. Give me a comment in the comment section. That's a life question. It's got nothing to do with the stock market. But how is it possible that days go can go really slow, but years fly by? That's the question I was asking myself today. Um, 
So it might have been last week I was talking about the energy stocks. The time to buy energy stocks is when everyone hates energy stocks. The time to buy energy stocks is when they're on their bottom, not up here, right? But down here. So we've started putting money to work in these ETFs. Okay. There's XOP, Exploration of Productions. And I'm going to show you two EMP stocks right now that we really like on our desk and we think can be taken over. Okay, so grab a pen and piece of paper. You can write these down and then do your own homework. This is not financial advice. This is how I run my own personal capital. You're the risk manager. You're the portfolio manager on a virtual hedge fund desk right now. So you figure out what I'm going to say fits your risk tolerance. Okay, but when I see a group ETF XOP set it up like this, so we're long XOP already. We dive in there and look for some names that we think will lead the rally will lead the breakout, may be acquired. Okay. I'll give you an example. Same chart pattern here on CCJ. We were buying it in these green boxes. Now it's running away from us. And I shared this with you a couple of weeks ago. Right. And so we spread out, we bought some URA. Now doesn't URA look very similar? By the way, in the, the, the trade was in here. So we're making money on URA and we've raised stops now. So we're going to make money no matter what, but then go take a look at XOP. Energy, energy is making a move. Energy is starting to make a move. We're buying close to the stop. If it reverses and breaks down, we're out. You can see the red line is where the stops are for us. Okay. But if this investment theme continues to develop, then these are the three stocks, this finger didn't want to go up. These are the three stocks that are on our desk right now that we're buying, okay? LNG, liquefied natural gas, Chenier, LNG, okay? Making a double bottom in here, just coming across the 200A, not even there yet, not quite across the, 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 the exponential 200A, but closed above the 50 right there, it's tight to the base. Okay. Range resources, an old favorite of ours, RRC. Broke the downtrend, then it pulled back, set up a double bottom, tested. That's what I love about this pattern. It shook out below the 200 day and reversed it back above it. There's your entry. This company we think can be acquired. And then we'll round it out with SBOW which is another small name we think can be acquired. And of course, there's an activist investor in Silver Bow that's trying to get the company to uh, perhaps you know, put itself up for sale. So we don't know if that's going to work or not, but I love that pennant formation, you know, and my stop would be somewhere right, right in there. That would be my stop. Okay. So I look for the pennant consolidation. I look for the reaction bars, the big up bars that, the meeting bars. That's how I know where the support comes in. It equals the 50 day moving average. That's where, that's where I would set up my, my stop. Okay. And I'm going to, I'm going to round this discussion out today with maybe the most interesting story on our desk right now. And that's Inovix. Now there's some famed short sellers that are short this thing. There's some famed short sellers that are along this thing. Okay. This thing's had a huge, crazy history. I've just been introduced to it recently. Armor insiders, armor analysts on our desk have been sharing this idea. We did some work on it together. We got on a conference call. We listened to management. We understood the story. I think there's real uh, potential in this story. I don't want to get into a debate about it, okay? I've been doing this over 30 years. I think this has real potential. I invest in people more than I do products. I think the management team that's come in in the last six to 12 months is the right management team for the job. There's a huge short position. The company doesn't make any money, right? They're burning through cash. They have to raise cash. I think it's very possible that they're going to announce a $70 million capital raise that doesn't dilute the stock. Just go listen to the conference call. And understand what it is they're doing and who is behind it. And it's an interesting story. High risk, no earnings, no revenue concept stock. But guess what? At the start of a massive bull market, companies like Inovix 
ENVX, companies like ENVX are the stocks that skyrocket if you find the right one at the beginning of these types of bull market rallies. Look, the market rolls over and crashes next week. I'm going to be out of everything I'm telling you about today. Okay, so risk management is the number one concern for us. So please understand while I'm sharing this information with you, it doesn't mean I'm going to own the stock by the end of the day Monday. If you want that information, guess what? Free five-day trial. Join us on the desk. Learn how we do it. See if you want to be a portfolio manager at a virtual hedge fund. That'll be up to you. But Innovix is something I think is worth some research, some due diligence. And of course, they had a nice uh, announcement on Friday and the stock was up pretty big and closed right at the highs up here. Okay. So maybe it's going to break out of that base. Maybe it won't. You know, the stop for me is probably the low of the, of the big up day. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was lots of fun. I had a, a good time. I hope you do. I hope you did. Let's kick it on over to some questions before we wrap up tonight. Anything that's on your mind, I'm happy to go over with you. So let's see. What do we got? Tech Monkey, how are you? Nice to see you. Been a long time. Nice to be back in the seat. You know, I just took some time off, Deb. I needed, a, needed to recharge a little bit. All right. What are you thinking about MSOS these days? MSOS, our old favorite. Um. So there's an idea that doesn't even have a pulse right now. So I'm going to tell you a couple of things, Deb. Number one, and I, I said this a while ago, I, I took a shot at it, in that green box down here. Remember that? I took a shot at it in here, okay, and it rallied up a little bit, and then the whole thing imploded. We got stopped out of it right, right in there. Our stop was right here. We went back to cash. That was, that was like right there was our stop, okay? So when it went through that level, it might have been a little bit tighter. I can't remember. But let's say even here, it was time to get out. Okay. And we haven't been in the stock since. And it's just, just flatlined. But I said to you back then, and I'm going to stand by this now. It's even easier for me to make this call now because the stock's down even more. I don't think anybody should put money into cannabis until you hear the announcement that Merrick Garland recommends schedule S3. And you're going to say to me right now, I know I can just, I see you squirming, Deb. I see you just going, what? The stock will be up a hundred percent that day. Number one, I'm not sure it will be up a hundred percent that day. I think people are going to be like a deer in the headlights, staring at the news, not knowing exactly what to do. It might be up 30%, it might be up 50%. I don't know. Off of $5 stock. But what I submit to you, Deb, is if I'm paying 10 or 11 for it, I don't care because it will be the game changer, the watershed that changes the entire business. And there'll be a bunch of people come out and tell you why that information, oh, Merrick Garland did, it's got about the, the government, blah, 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 blah. Everyone's going to argue about it. And so the stock will go up and then it will sell off because people are trapped in these things. So they'll dump on the news and I will be buying that news. And I don't care if I pay up 100% for it that day. If I pay 10, I don't care because it will completely change the game. That's my opinion. That's my opinion. Until that time, If you look at the business right now, it's in contraction. The government has succeeded in screwing up one of the greatest investment opportunities of our lifetime. It, it, how the government could screw up the ability to make money selling weed, only the government could do. Only the government could do that. And they've done it. They've succeeded. Right? So, we, so until we literally get a schedule change, I know down here in Florida, there's a company called Parallel, right? They own Certera Wellness and a bunch of other things. And they had, they had properties, I think, in Texas and other areas. And I think um, Jimmy Buffett was part of it. Don't quote me on that. But I thought he was an investor. It was a private company. Remember, they tried to go public 
and they miss the window. Well, now they're defaulting on leases. So they might go out of business. I saw recently that Kim at True Leave is selling off her properties in, uh, uh, in Massachusetts, which I love. And so this gets to my point. I'm not sure I want to own MSOS, although I could be splitting hairs here because if we get a story about a schedule change, everything's going to go to the moon. Okay. But if someone said to me, I want to buy before that news, then I would say, well, then I would only own, um, true leaf. Okay. Maybe green thumb. I mean, I would only buy the best of the best. True Leave is going through a contraction. And I think Kim is doing all the right things to run that business successfully. Okay. And I'm down here in Florida and I, I check out the different locations periodically. And every time I go to, 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 to True Leave, all I can tell you is the parking lot's packed and all the other dispensaries around it, because they're always they're always together. There's a cure leaf over here, caddy cornered over here, is there terror wellness, you know, whatever. True leaves always packed and the other, you know, parking lots are half empty I, or empty completely. And when you go into them, there's only one true experience down here in Florida and it's true leave. I mean, everything else just pales in comparison. So I would go, if I'm going to, if I'm going to put capital to work, I would rather just go with the best company with, who, with a management team that I think is doing a good job in the midst of a downturn, which is what's going on right now. So that's a long-winded answer to your question. Number one, I'm not buying any of them until I see a federal change of some kind. And safe banking does nothing for me. I don't know why they need safe banking. I go into True Leave down here in Florida. I can use a debit card, put it into a, a card reader. There's no cash. It's cashless. Like, what's the problem? How, 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 I mean, I get it. I get it. They have a lot of cash. People come in as a cash business. But I'm just saying... There's, there's many ways to skin the cat right now. I mean, I don't, I just, safe banking is not going to get me off, you know, off of my position unless inside of safe banking, if it's just lip service, Deb, I don't care about it. Now, if they come out and they say to me inside of safe banking, it allows all of these companies to uplist to the New York stock exchange, then maybe we got something. But I don't think that's the case. It's going to be some kind of watered down bullshit, which is always the problem in cannabis. Until such time, as the head of the DOJ comes out and says, we've completed our study that President Biden asked us to do last year. And we think it should be Schedule S3. And then here's the last piece that concerns me. It's really why it's hard for me to put money into cannabis right now. I don't know what the playing field's going to look like when they reclassify it. Is true leave even the right investment? I don't know. I don't know what the playing field's going to look like. Will you still have to be vertically integrated? Or do they change it to S3 and now anybody can get in the business? I don't know. Do, do you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm sure there's going to be value in true leave, but I don't know how to value true leave until I know what the playing field is. So these are all the reasons why I don't have money in cannabis right now. And I love the idea and I'll stay on it. And I'll keep looking for opportunities, but I just, I don't see it right now. No, that was a long winded answer, but there it is. KC, how you doing, brother? Thoughts on chat. I think, um, Roundhill generative AI and tech. Um, so let's just go over your charts. First of all, I, I think, um, I love, I, I love um, AI and I think it's a massive opportunity and I don't think I, I need to give my money to round Hill to figure out how to put the money there. That's because KC, I'm a professional. I've been like, you know, like I said, I've been running money for over 30 years, ran hedge funds for a decade. So I know how to build my own chat ETF at armor investing. So we're going to own the research names. We like the best using our day trading and swing trading strategies to put the capital to work correctly. And then we're going to ride them as hard as we can. And so I'm not going to give money to somebody else to make those decisions. But 
if I was an individual investor and I didn't have the time or I wasn't able to connect, there's like I said, there's free trials so you can come on in and take a look at what we're doing. And if that suits you, if it, if it fits your, your uh, approach, right. And you're comfortable working with us, well, then you'll build your own AI portfolio. And I, and that's the way I'd rather go, you know, but I, I don't like gimmicky. I don't like gimmicky ETFs. They, they, they just rub me the wrong way. Cause what they normally do is put a whole bunch of money into the top three or four names, which you and I could do on our own. So why do I got to give it to chat <laughs> the round hill? You know what I'm saying? And then they buy a whole bunch of tiny little positions. Uh, you know, it's like, I'd rather take my own shot, you know, doing my own research anyway. Um, let's move on. T G L S. I don't, I don't know techno glass. I have to do a little bit of work on it. So I can't, I can't, I'm just going to, you know, give you chart analysis and thoughts. If I know the company techno glass, I don't know. And, um, that chart, there's nothing compelling to me there. So, uh, tempered safety. I, um, I can't, I can't help you with that one. Uh, M E L I. I like M E L I. It's the, you know what, you know, um, Kind of like the eBay of South America. Um, and it's not a bad chart pattern. I, I don't know. I, I, I like shop a little bit better. I think shop, which is, I know not the same thing. They don't compete, but I, I can find better chart patterns than Mercado Libre, but I, 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 I'm, I don't not like it. And I love the numbers they're knocking down, right? They're putting up some pretty big numbers. So um, I've looked at it. And then there's what? Cold natural gas um oops. we're gonna buy some of our favorite natural gas emp companies like range resources or lng okay or uh, sbow these are companies that will really benefit from the price of natural gas going up that's the way we're gonna do it but you know uh, i you know you could certainly go with cold i mean an ultra nat gas story. I am uh, twice the inverse of the natural gas index. Twice the inverse. Twice the inverse of the natural gas index. So you're looking for it to go down. You want to short natural gas? I, I don't. I don't. I don't. I'm not with you on that one. Yeah, next energy. Yeah, sure. That looks pretty good. The utilities, you know, they took it on the chin, but if the Fed's close, look at the utilities. And these things are all paying um, what this is on um, Duke at 4.4%, Southern Company at at uh, 4%, uh, EIX at uh, Edison is, is at 4.2%. Uh, and they all got whacked, um, but but it looks like they're coming off those lows. And then, of course, NE is always the growth stock, right? They don't really have a fat dividend. It's two and a half percent. But I like that chart pattern of, of all the names you've suggested. Brendan, how are you? Nice to see you, my friend. What do you got for me? Baidu and Baba. Um, I, I, I was discussing, you know, during our conversation today that, um, you know, China is, China is about to launch a massive QE program. If they actually do that, I was talking about this on the desk this week. And it's funny. Um, I just said to, to, to uh, KC that I don't like, you know, gimmicky ETFs, blah, blah, blah. But I do like country ETFs where I'm not comfortable buying individual stocks in the country where I'm not even sure that the earnings and revenue and all the numbers make any sense. And that's what that's always kept me away from Chinese stocks other than just trading them quickly. Um, so I, I actually like the idea of putting money into Chinese companies. Alibaba looks great down here. Um, uh, Baidu looks great down here, but I don't know if I was going to put money in Chinese companies, I, I think I might just go with FXI and K web and be done with it. So I do, I will use 
ETFs in a situation like this where I don't like buying the individual names. But here's a thought for you, Brandon. If we really think that China is going to reflate, then BHP and Rio have to be home runs because these are the guys that that are supplying the basic materials into a resurgent China if they're ever, you know, if they're able to resurge. Okay, and so those are some interesting ideas in, in my in my opinion. Hey, thanks so much for that, Deb. I appreciate it. Um, chips too, AMD. Yeah. Um, here's another situation. Here's another situation. Uh, KC, this is interesting. I, I don't like what round Hill and I'm not a big fan, for instance, of the arc funds. I feel like they're gimmicks to get people to give them money and I could do a better job myself. But when it comes to chip companies, I can't do a better job myself. I'm looking at all of the chip charts and they all look great. Some look extended. Some are just breaking out. And so what I've decided to do is just buy socks. So we own SOXX on our uh, trading desk and then uh, SOXL, which is triple the performance, right? Triple the performance of, of semis. Now I've raised my stop because we bought it in here and it popped up and I've got a gain. I got my stop somewhere in here. So I might get stopped out to, you know, Monday if the market's down, I'll book a profit. That's going to be a, a quick swing trade for me. And AMD is one of the reasons why I would have a, a tight stop on semis right now. It looks tired to me. You know, I know NVIDIA had a huge run at the end of the day, what on um, the end of the week last week. So it keeps marching higher, but um I like the equipment cup players. You know, I, I think Marvell looks great. I think, um, what am I forgetting? Um, Broadcom. What's Broadcom symbol? Just flew out of my head. Oh, AVGO, right? AVGO looks great. Okay. And the way I'm just going to play it is SOXL. And that's how I want to play it. How many... Do you think, this is my question for you, Brandon, do you think AMD is going to triple the performance of the entire semi-index? If you do, then that's your investment. If you don't, then I'm just trading semis and I'd rather trade triple the semis. So let me be clear. I'm not buying any semis right now. We already bought them. We're already making money. I've raised my stop. I'll book a profit on it. So I'm not buying semis right now, but I'm riding a wave as best we can. And I'm using SOXL to do it right now. If, if we get a nice clean sell off in semis, I book a profit in SOXL and they all come down to an upward trending moving average. Then I might put it, start putting on AMD, NVIDIA and my favorite semi names again, but not, I'm not doing that right now. Oh, Stan, I absolutely love UiPath. Okay. It's my favorite AI story. And it doesn't get the play it deserves because it doesn't have a symbol AI, right? Okay. I've been saying this and I've been so ridiculously wrong. Okay. I think this company's a piece of junk. So the stock got wrecked because other people think uh, it's a piece of junk and then it skyrockets because it's, you know, overly short and it's got AI as the symbol. But I personally think long-term the story is UiPath. I really do. So that's where I've got an investment and I'm, I'm already in, I'm already making money. I got a raise stop. It breaks down next week. I'm out, but this is the very top of my whiteboard. This is the, this is the place I want to go stand. If I want to try to make money in, in, uh, in, in AI, in an individually, you know, kind of smaller cap name, you know, obviously Microsoft, Google, NVIDIA, those are the top line ways to do it. And then this is the, the secondary way to do it. I got to move on a little quick here because I got to get out of here soon, but been, um, been a long since 2001. I, I assume that's about AMD and well done on that one, brother. Yeah. Yep. We're on, we're in agreement there. It will be a swing trade adding. So you you want to be short. You want to be short. Natural gas. Okay. M-O. Well, that chart doesn't look very good on M-O, Deb. I'll be honest with you. The, the, the dividend's enticing. <clears throat> I'll tell you, <clears throat> here's an enticing dividend I'm staring at. Why don't I own AT&T right now? 
Why don't I own AT&T right now? I, I, that needs to go in my dividend portfolio, maybe Monday morning. And I don't own it because, oh, hey, uh, Amazon's going to get into the business, blah, blah, blah. I'm, whatever. at and is not going out of business and they're, they're funding that dividend for now. And what a double bottom that is. I mean, geez, the time to own it is when everyone hates it and it's paying a fat yield. Same with Verizon. They've taken their lumps. You know, yeah, they're going to go out of business because Amazon's going to kill them, whatever. And down here, double bottom, a yield over 7 8%, you know, makes a new low, I'm out. Makes a new low, and I throw my hands up, Deb, and I say, I don't get it. I don't get it. But if they go up from here, I'm going to lock in 7 8% yield. I can't do that on, on MO. I don't, I, just, I don't see it right now. You're welcome, Brandon. Thanks for, for joining and sharing. EXMT. Sell mortgage trust. I'm not with you on that. Good luck on that one. Hey! How you doing, Mo? Nice to see you, man. You own at and I, I mean, right? I, how can I not own at and I, I gotta I got to get on at and And I also don't... I. I keep trying to shoehorn myself into IBM, you know, I, and I missed, I, I, I couldn't do it. I listened to the conference call and I said, this just sounds like such a boring stock, but down here is when we, our, our armor algo went green. I should have been buying that and collecting the yield. Cause I think IBM's going up too. All right, guys, listen, this has been absolutely, you know, a ton of fun. I'm, I'm so glad we were able to spend time again together. I want to, put the Dow up here as the chart of the week to look at because I don't think it looks better than that. I look forward to seeing you all next Sunday night. We're going to do this on Sunday nights. Today was Monday because market was closed. We'll do next Sunday night, seven o'clock. And don't forget, subscribe guys, in case you're not already subscribed. And I don't know, do I have to do this little thing to help remind you? Subscribe to the YouTube channel right now. Every day, 4.05, I'm coming to you live with one chart on the desk that we were working on that day and sharing the information with you that we think is going to make money for us. So go ahead and subscribe, share the channel if you want to, if you find it helpful. Okay. And uh, I'll see you guys next week. I hope you guys have a wonderful night.